Howdy, folks. Welcome to Tiny Tent Show, episode number four, composed to reflect the fact that we've just celebrated the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. So a lot of the material presented by the Blue Canvas Orchestra members tonight will reflect that subject matter. We will also have an interview coming up a little later with the daughter of the very man who founded Earth Day. We're also fortunate to report that this week we have four sponsors for the show, and I'd like to share them with you now. I'd like to thank Kim Ogle and Ruth Getz. I would like to thank Star North up there in Cornucopia. I would like to thank the Brownstone Pharmacy in Washburn, Wisconsin. And then finally, Quilts on the Wall Design, Barb and Bill Gober. If you have a chance to swing by the Big Top Facebook page and like us, that sounds needy, but it's just part of how things work these days. Maybe it is needy. Maybe it's okay to be a little needy. I don't know. Now's not the time probably for me to parse that whole thing out. Swing by our Facebook page. Or you can also subscribe to Tiny Tent Show on, on the Big Top YouTube channel. And that way you'll get notifications whenever we put up new content. And... Uh, honestly, if you're enjoying these shows, please share them with somebody, too. That helps us uh, draw attention to the tent and help keep it pitched, as it were. There's a, a GoFundMe set up to help support the tent. And if you want to donate to the cause, the best thing to do really is to go to, to www.bigtop.org and you'll find all the information you need. You can also go to bigtop.org forward slash tiny tent show and that will get you even more specifically to this production. So we thank you so much for your support. We thank you for dropping by online, virtually, checking in with us the way we are checking in with you. The folks from offstage have asked me to share a message with you. Obviously, the state of live performance has been affected all around the world. The Big Top is no different, but the Big Top board is on top of this situation. They're monitoring it closely and they will make the very best decision uh, for the safety and health of our patrons, our artists, our community, and our supporters, and, and as well as what's best for the Big Top organization. So for now, we're just doubly and triply grateful for everyone's love and support during what is <laughs> really the intermission to uh, top all intermissions. So to the music now. For our first offering today, uh, this is a classical offering in the most classic sense. It is a sweet, lovely tune called Andante, from, which is not a word I use every day, but it's the Andante from Mendelssohn's Violin Concert. And as most things are these days, it is presented via satellite by Blue Canvas Orchestra members Severin Bainan and Ed Willett. Thank you. 
Thanks, Ed and Severin. That that was beautiful. Um, also, just in case you people think I'm not paying attention and you think I just fell off the hay wagon, and I realized after I did the introduction, it's not Mendelssohn's concert, it's his concerto. That's right. I've read a few books. I'll listen to a little public radio. Well, folks, we're, we're now going to go visit Randy Sabine by way of a video that he prepared. And in short, he's going to climb inside a bunch of plants and play his violin or his fiddle, depending on your mood. Randy. I'd like to honor the 50th anniversary of Earth Day and Gaylord Nelson by playing my arrangement of Nature Boy, written in 1948 by Eden Abes. He was sort of a nature boy himself. At one point, he actually lived under the first L of the Hollywood sign in Beverly Hills. I learned the tune from a piece of sheet music I found in my grandmother's organ bench um, sometime in junior high school, I think, when I was supposed to be practicing my violin lesson. I was attracted to it because it had a picture of Eden Abes on the cover and he had really long hair. I thought anybody who looked like that in 1948 probably wrote a cool tune. The first time I was involved with a house show at the Big Top was to help create the Wild River Show, which celebrated the 20th anniversary of the Wild and Scenic River Act, one of Gaylord Nelson's crowning achievements. So here's to Gaylord Nelson and all the nature boys and girls working to keep our environment livable for generations to come. Happy Earth Day. Randy Sabine. Again, always, always nervous about calling it a violin or a fiddle. I, I, I've at times understood the difference, but mainly I'm just worried I'm going to say violin when I should say fiddle or fiddle when I should say violin, and then the violinist or the fiddler is going to come after me with his, her bow. 
So far, so good. The point is, that was lovely, Randy. Thank you. Our next guest is Tia Nelson, and I could introduce her and put her in context, but she does a lovely job of that herself. So let us now just go directly to my interview with Tia Nelson. It's my pleasure now to welcome Tia Nelson. And rather than do the long and expected introduction myself, I would just like uh, to say, first of all, welcome Tia. It's terrific to see you. And let Tia herself explain why we would speak with her this particular week and this particular year. Well, April 22nd, 2020 is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. Uh, hard even for me to believe. And uh, my father, Gaylord Nelson, former Wisconsin governor and United States Senator, was the founder of Earth Day, an event that turned out to be successful beyond his wildest dreams. And I am doing everything I can uh, to honor his legacy. And I feel a great sense of duty to tell his story and uh, hopefully, uh, give uh, young people today a sense of inspiration about uh, how they can make a difference in protecting the environment. And so I've been working to promote a film uh, the Outrider Foundation and to build bridges uh, to a brighter by helping tell an inspiring story uh, that's, of course, very personal to me, uh, but it's also uh, my life's work, you know. I think part of that personal story for you obviously springs from your father and then now you have your own body of work in, in that area. How much of that also springs from the time that you spent up in the, the Bayfield and Washburn area and the Mellon area back in the day? Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, sure. You know, very much, my, my father was often asked, you know, how, how he came to be a conservationist and environmentalist. and he would tell stories. He was an extraordinary rank on tour and he would tell stories about growing up in Clear Lake and he, he would often say that he, he, his affection for nature came through the process of osmosis. And I think for me it was very similar and my experiences in the North Woods of Wisconsin as a child, uh, vacationing there with my parents, visiting uh, Martin and Louis Hansen's a property off the Brunsweiler River outside of Mellon uh, left a big uh, impression on me. They were magnificent days uh, of uh, childhood play in nature, but also magnificent evenings of, of rancorous political debate uh, um, among, uh, you know, really some of the leading figures in Wisconsin and American politics. And it's, the memories are quite remarkable. It wasn't until later in life, when I was, I, when I was 18, I, I lucked out in a big way and I got hired as a fisheries technician by the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources out of the Bayfield office. And so I was the first woman to work the hack noise, which is a gill, no, a gill net tug um, that is docked uh, to this day uh, in downtown Bayfield. And, um, that's when I first, you know, experienced uh, in a deep way the Apostle Islands and came to understand my father's just decades of effort to protect the lakeshore. Uh, when was the last time you piloted that boat? Oh, well, I never, they, gosh, they never let me pilot the boat. I, I you know, I, I was down in the, uh, below uh, uh, pulling the whitefish uh, out of the gill net. Um, uh, so, God, you know, I'm 63. It was, uh, in, I was doing that in, let's say, 18 through 22. So it's been a long time. Uh, as, and uh, nobody would wisely let me pilot a big boat like that. But I did work it and I worked hard and it was a really, you know, a extraordinary experience. Imagine, you know, getting paid to get up in the morning and spend your day on the lake and the, you know, largest freshwater archipelago in the world. Uh, for me, you know, I've, I've traveled the world in my work for the Nature Conservancy over the course of almost 20 years and have been to close to 30 countries. For me, there's just no place more magical than the Apostle Islands. I think it's interesting too, just in the story that you told, you highlighted the fact that uh, often environmentalism in those areas intersects with work. And can you speak to that a little bit as well? 
Yeah, you, you know, it was interesting later, I returned to Wisconsin, um, you know, I'm not very good at counting, maybe 15 years ago, I, I went to the University of Wisconsin, studied wildlife ecology, I worked in the state capitol for a while, I wasn't much of a, a field ecologist, I wasn't very good at it, that's uh, uh, what I mean, and I t uh, gravitated to being interested in environmental policy, worked in the capitol, and then went uh, to Washington to work for the Nature Conservancy. I came back about 15 years ago or something like that, and I went to work at the Public Lands Commission, and uh, uh, it's a fascinating story of the agency, which I won't go into now, but uh, we managed a portfolio of about 80,000 acres of forests, um, uh, uh, much of which was in uh, and is in timber production. Uh, some uh, unique natural areas are uh, in permanent conservation. Um, but, I, you know, I, I was, I've always been fascinated by finding that balance of human impact on the environment and how, uh, and I really think the farmers, foresters, fishermen, they're as close to the land as you can get. And um, it, it's, that it was an interesting journey for me at BCPL um, for the simple reason that there were expectations of me being a city girl, uh, quote unquote, and being the daughter of a famous environmentalist. And I, I spent a good bit of time uh, earning the trust of, of the uh, loggers and timber managers up in the Northwoods when I came back. Uh, but it was, uh, you know, wonderful for me and is, is a part of, you know, who I am. When you think of the, the Big Top Chautauqua, the tent up there, uh, I'm always, when, when I'm up there early and I have time, I always climb the ski hill so that I can look down over the tent, over the greenery, out to the Apostle Islands. Um, I have to believe you've taken in that view yourself, and I just wonder what it evokes in you. I, I have. I, I love going to, to Big Top, and I have a tradition I've kept up for many decades now that any, any, anyone who, in Bayfield who knows me um, uh, knows that I uh, come there for the summer solstice and have every year for many, many decades. And uh, the evening of the solstice, I sail the solstice sunset. It's my birthday. Um, and a group of friends and I uh, go out on a boat and uh, uh, watch uh, the sunset. So uh, these traditions are very important to me. That view is uh, a the one you refer uh, to is a beautiful one. I uh, stay with my uh, dear friend uh, Judith from uh, Grunkies Inn, and she's just up the other hill uh, with a beautiful view, and I can see Long Island from from the from the deck there. And I sit there many an evenings, just marveling at, at the natural beauty of the place. So, as a, a last question. When you're looking out at those Apostle Islands, you're seeing the legacy of your father's work. You're now at a point in your life where you yourself have your own legacy related to environmental issues. I've got a just turned 13 year old environmental issues are at the forefront of her mind. Um, what do you think the legacy will be in another 50 years? And I realize that's a speculative, open-ended question. But that's I, I love to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, talk. it's a it's a great question. When I, you know, I it, on the fiftieth anniversary of Earth Day, I'm in my own sort of complicated dance between hope and despair, as I've uh, said many times this week. And and my my hope comes from reflecting on my father's uh, legacy and work. And just take the Apostle Islands. For, for example, uh, that was a very difficult uh, journey for him and Bud Jordahl, uh, who played a critical role in uh, uh, crafting and drafting that legislation, told me that I, I think they had to rewrite that uh, a dozen times. It took, I think, close to seven years to get it adopted. My, my father faced a lot of challenges, uh, defeats and setbacks, but he never gave up. And uh, I know through his, his example of his life that individual action matters and that you can make a difference 
Um, you get up from your place of values uh, with your sense of purpose and you do what you can and unimaginable imaginable things can happen. Earth Day is a great example of that. Um, and so I just have to, I, I hold on to with, with a great sense of, of, uh, of sort of personal love and affection to my father's story, but also just having observed all of my life, um, someone just get up in the morning and uh, do what was good and right and important to them and, and know that um, uh, great things can come of that. And so my hope is the kids of today, uh, when they're celebrating a, a brighter future on the 100th anniversary of Earth Day, know that uh, I did everything I could uh, to help build that brighter future and give them a chance. Tia Nelson, thank you so much for taking time to speak with us today on Tiny Tent Show. We thank you and, and we thank your father for, for your, your twinned legacies. Oh, well, my pleasure. Thank you so much. Nice talking to you, Michael. You bet. See you down the road. Yeah. A big thank you to Tia Nelson for taking time out of her day to talk to us about her legacy and the legacy of her father. It was a, it was a privilege to have that conversation. Nothing symbolizes a good day on, on the good earth like a clear blue sky. And whatever the state of the sky where you are now, or even if you don't have access to a window, I have good news. Sometimes you can hear a blue sky. And here to clear away your clouds in exactly that manner are Blue Canvas Orchestra members Severin Bainan, Jane Allickson, and Tom Mitchell. <laughs>
know, as much as we miss the tent, there's something about creating these shows in separation that makes me appreciate the talents of the Blue Canvas Orchestra members even more. You, you take away the spotlight, you take away the microphones, you take away the stage, you take away the gear, you even take away the audience. And what you're left with is a chance to discover that at base, what you just have is a bunch of fabulously talented musicians. So it's a pleasure to share them with you, even, even, in, even via these electrons. Well, folks, hands up. Who would like to go to Maui about right now? <laughs> Actually, I think any of us would be happy to go anywhere. Maui, Minong, Mellon, whatever you got with an M would be fine. So I'm going to turn things over to Jack Gunderson. He, he went outside with his phone and, and he recorded a song about uh, sailing down to Maui. And he says, uh, to really understand the song, you have to imagine that you're surrounded by a bunch of smelly sailors who've been locked on a ship for a long, long time. Again, similar to the situation many of us find ourselves in. And uh, probably the only respite you're going to get on this trip is singing along with your fellow sailors. So if you'd like, uh, I'm told that the chorus is rolling down to old Maui, me boys, rolling down to old Maui. We're homeward bound from the Arctic ground, rolling down to old Maui. So let's all sing along with Jack. It's a damn tough life full of toil and strife we whaler men undergo. And we don't give a damn when the gale is done, how hard the winds did blow. Cause we're homeward bound from the Arctic ground with a good ship taut and free. And we won't give a damn when we drink our rum with the girls of Omawi. Rolling down to old Maui, me boys, rolling down to old Maui. We're homeward bound from the Arctic ground, rolling down to old Maui. Once more we sail with the northerly gale through the ice and wind and rain. Them coconut fronds, them tropical lands we soon shall see again. Six hellish months we've passed away on the cold Kamchatka sea. But now we're bound from the Arctic ground, rolling down to old Maui. Rolling down to old Maui, me boys, rolling down to old Maui. We're homeward bound from the Arctic ground, rolling down to old Maui. Once more we sail with the northerly gale towards our island home. Our main mast sprung, our whaling done, and we ain't got far to roam. Our stunsail booms is carrying away, what care we for that sound? A living gale is after us, thank God we're homeward bound. Rolling down to old Maui, me boys, rolling down to old Maui. We're homeward bound from the Arctic ground, rolling down to old Maui. How soft the breeze through the island trees, now the ice is far astern. Them native maids, them tropical glades is awaiting our return. Even now their big brown eyes look out, hoping some fine day to see. Our baggy sails running for the gales, rolling down to old Maui. Rolling down to old Maui, me boys, rolling down to old Maui. We're homeward bound from the Arctic ground, rolling down to old Maui. Jack Gunderson, everybody, taking us to Maui. From 1994 to 2012, 18 years, Cheryl Leah was a member of the Blue Canvas Orchestra, and pretty much once a member, always a member. And so it's my pleasure now to say that Cheryl is here to perform with Ed Willett, uh, a piece that is built on a piece of writing by the, the legendary environmental philosopher John Muir. And the piece describes a lake that was part of the Muir farm. Cheryl and Ed originally performed it for an Ice Age Scenic Trail and Wisconsin Friends of John Muir event to commemorate the addition of the acreage that included the actual lake in question to uh, that of the John Muir Park near Montello, Wisconsin. So please welcome now, Ed and Cheryl. Happy Earth Day, everybody. 
we would like to do a reading by a man named John Muir, who without his words and inspiration, many an Earth Day would have been far less than it's meant to be. We honor all the greatest environmental conservationists who ever lived, and we appreciate them on this day. We hope you enjoy this one. This is called Fountain Lake. Great was the delight of brothers David and Daniel and myself when father gave us a few pine boards for a boat. It was a memorable day when we got that boat built and launched into the lake. And never shall I forget our first sail over the gradually deepening water sunbeams pouring through it, revealing the strange plants covering the bottom, and the fishes coming about us, staring and wondering, as if the boat were a monstrous, strange fish. The water was so clear, it was almost invisible. When we floated slowly out over it, over the plants and the fishes, we seemed to be miraculously sustained in the air, while silently exploring a veritable fairyland. Our beautiful lake, named Fountain Lake by Father, but Muir's Lake by the neighbors, is one of the many small glacier lakes that adorn the Wisconsin landscapes. It is fed by 20 or 30 meadow springs, about half a mile long and half as wide, and surrounded by low, finely modeled hills, dotted with oak and hickory, and meadows full of grasses and sedges and many beautiful orchids and ferns. First, there's a zone of green, shining rushes. And just beyond the rushes, a zone of white and orange water lilies, 50 or 60 feet wide, forming a magnificent border. On bright days, when the lake was rippled by the breezes, the lilies and sun sprinkles danced together in radiant beauty, and it became difficult to discriminate between them. On Sundays, after or before chores and sermons and Bible lessons, we drifted about that lake for hours, especially in early time, getting finest lessons and sermons from the water and the flowers, the ducks, fishes, and muskrats. In particular, we took Christ's advice and considered the lilies how they grow up in beauty out of gray lime mud and ride gloriously among the breezy sun spangles. On our way home, we gathered grand bouquets of them to be kept fresh all the week. No flower was hailed with greater wonder and admiration by the European settlers in general, Scotch, English, and Irish, than this white water lily. Nymphomia odorata. It's a magnificent plant, queen of the inland waters, and pure white, three or four inches in diameter. The most beautiful, sumptuous, and deliciously fragrant of all our Wisconsin flowers. No lily garden in civilization could ever compare with our late garden. Cheryl, Leah, and Ed Willett, everyone. Lucky to have them in the circle. We're going to continue with the thread of considering the earth with a song now by Phil Anich with some, with some help remotely from Severin Bainet performing a John Prine song called Paradise. Hey folks, hope you're doing okay out there. In 1970, I was a sophomore at Ashland High School and uh, Martin Schreiber, who was running for Lieutenant Governor with Patrick Lucy, 
uh, flew into the Kennedy International Airport in Ashland, and a bunch of us school students, uh, we biked and walked, and my friend Randy Gilbertson even rode his unicycle out there to meet him. And then we convoyed back on foot, bicycle, back to the Dodd Gymnasium where Martin gave a presentation about Earth Day. Um, pretty cool. We were aware at that time that the Earth was having some problems and it's not gotten any better, obviously. And now with the COVID-19, now we realize that uh, we're all in this together. And it's, to me, no time for nationalism. You know, back in the day when Gaylord Nelson was putting these ideas forward, there was a lot of support. You know, Richard Nixon was president, you know, with the Clean Air Act. Well, just think about that. You know, Republicans, Nick, Nixon, you know, there's cooperation. There was an understanding, too, that internationally we had to work together. Anyway, here's a song, here's a song by John Prime.
Philip Anich and Severin Bain and everybody performing a John Prine song. So if you've ever come to the Big Top and seen Tom Mitchell perform, uh, you know he's always willing to go that extra mile to entertain. And today is no exception. In the following video, Tom will, um, <laughs> you know, just have a look. Hello, I'm Tom Mitchell. I'm about to attempt something that has never before been attempted or successfully achieved in the history of humanity. I'm going to play a harmonica chugging rhythmic train solo while brushing a fine-haired dog. Ready? <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Uh, I think a special thank you also to Brady, who was the was the dog not harmed in that sketch, but I don't know that he signed any waivers either. <laughs> We're going to move on now to a, a conversation with Ed Willett. I'll just go ahead and dial him up on the old computer. Howdy, Ed. Hey, how's it going? Hanging in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good, man. You're a busy, you're a busy man. You, you got, I see your email threads, huh? You got lots going on. I think everybody is, though. You know, it, you, the schedule, in one way, the schedule has been cleared, whether we like it or not. But it, right. we have a way of filling up and everybody's, man, we're all just navigating this thing. And so I think it's yeah. in its own way. One yeah, of the, it's kind of, I know, I know you're working on a, a new show. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Um, well, fingers crossed. Um, I don't know when the new show will air, but um, we started a few months ago working on a show that is going to spotlight Wisconsin conservationists and preservationists, and both in historically and in the present day, because there's a lot going on. Many, many conservation groups that are are doing really great work right now. And so, um, but the unifying thread of this show called Earth is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. We decided the 50th anniversary should be the whole year because it's gonna take us a while to get this together. <laughs> and, uh, and so we, um, a part of this show, there's gonna be many attributes to the show. There's gonna be appearances um, by the Flat Earth Society, you know, the probably we'll call him Dr. Denial or something like that. You know, there'll be all kinds of fun things. But one of the fun things um, is that we are doing a piece, I'm writing a piece, an instrumental that is going to have um, submissions, I hope, from Chautauqua fan base. Oh. And yeah, and so Betty Ferris is going to be. Uh, curating that and, and we've made a place on our website that people can upload videos or pictures and the subjects uh, a lot of the subject will be something called the self-propelled symphony that's what I'm writing in three movements and then um, it's all about silent sports that piece is about silent sports so if anybody has 
great kayaking footage, biking, you know, snowshoeing, anyway, in silent sports. And then also any um, just beautiful environment nature shots would be welcome too. And we're gonna ask that you limit it to, to two shots a piece until we know how many people are going to <laughs> to respond. We may put out an additional uh, ask, but people can um, upload these on our website at the bigtop.org website forward slash 2020 Earth Day. So you'll see a button to uh, be able to upload those. And we hope that everybody will participate and, and it's a thrill to see your stuff on the big screen. This is great. I think it, as a wrap up, it, it sort of speaks to what we're all doing right now is that we've, we've been separated, but it's, it's also driven us into connecting in ways we haven't connected before. So the idea of an audience supported show in the sense that they're actually supporting it with material is fascinating. Yeah. So I, hope, yeah. I hope folks go to www.bigtop.org and then there is that forward slash, but there will also be a pretty obvious button. Oh, there. yeah. Yeah, you won't be able to miss it. Yeah, and, and, and feel free to contribute to this to this new show. So thanks for yeah. taking the time to check in from out there in the uh, in the hinterlands, Ed. We we both always right on my hinterland brother. Hinterlands and hinternet. <laughs> so, yeah. Really is great, <laughs> great phrase. Okay. Yeah, right on my hinterland brother. That's right. Take care. <laughs> we'll see you down the road. Okay. You bet. Earlier this week, the folks at the Lake Superior Big Top Chautauqua, the Tiny Tent Show folks, asked me if I had written any Earth Day songs. And I, I can't say that I specifically have, but then later it occurred to me that I had written one that could maybe slide in sideways. This song is called Shaman Girl, and I wrote it about the day I met my wife. She was walking down the sidewalk of a small Wisconsin town, holding the hand of a, a little girl that would become my beloved given daughter. Um, the song takes us all the way through to the point where we propose to each other during the clarinet solo of Yes Sir, That's My Baby while sitting in Preservation Hall in New Orleans. But in between, there's a couple of verses I wrote while I was on a whitewater rafting trip down the Grand Canyon. And I took that trip uh, with a group of people who believe that the earth is 6,000 years old. And we don't agree about that. But we did both agree that we love the earth, and that was a beautiful trip. So here's my kind of Earth Day song, Shaman Girl. Shaman girl on the sidewalk With your baby at your side Could you love man in blue jeans Tattered shirt and a cluttered mind Bottom line Given time We'll be fine I am staring at the canyon I am bringing you to mine I am looking for an answer I see rocks and sky and time And I find As a raven flies So do I Hey, baby I am straight three-quarter time Hey Baby, I can be deaf, dumb, and blind, but I fly. How I fly, how I fly. A true line, yeah, I walk the line.
Boatman, can you read the river? I hear rapids round the bend Steady hand on the tiller A little luck and a little dread Miles have said Now I lay my head On the wedding bed Should I grow to be an old man Chasing echoes of your heart I close my eyes and see us walking In New Orleans after dark You and me Cheek to cheek New Orleans Hey, baby, I am straight three-quarter time. Hey, hey, baby, I can be deaf, dumb, and blind, but I fly, how I fly, how I fly. A true line Yeah, walk the line Shaman girl is on my doorstep With her baby at her side She is thinking she could love me my tattered shirt and my cluttered mind Bottom line Given time We'll be fine Shaman girl going on uh, going on 16 years since that night in Preservation Hall. So our next guest is not just a friend of the tent, she's part of the tent family, part of the Blue Canvas Orchestra family, here tonight to sing a song by Joni Mitchell, Yasmi. Hey everybody, good to see you all again. I'm gonna be playing in honor of Earth Day, a classic Joni Mitchell tune, which I'm sure you all recognize. Hope you like it. With a pink hotel, a boutique, and a swinging hot spot. Don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you've got till it's gone? Hey, paradise, with a parking lot. Take all the trees, put them in a tree museum. Yeah. 
Yasmin, everyone. Pleasure, pleasure to have her singing with us. Well, we've hit the end of the road for tonight anyway. I want to thank our sponsors, Kim Ogle and Ruth Getz. We want to thank our sponsors, Star North up in Cornucopia. Our sponsors, Brownstone Pharmacy right there on the main drag in Washburn, Wisconsin. And finally, our sponsors, Quilts on the Wall Design, Barb and Bill Gover. As we said earlier in the show, if you get a chance to like us on Facebook, we'd sure appreciate that. It helps get the word out. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That will uh, allow you to be notified whenever anything new goes up. Not just this show, anything related to the Big Top. Um, and also, if you're enjoying this show, please share it with your friends. And share with them the fact that we're doing a fundraiser for the tent to, to kind of help the tent stay pitched. Uh, there's a GoFundMe. Really, the best way to get to all of this information is to visit www.bigtop.org. And if you really want to get creative, go to www.bigtop.org forward slash tiny tent show that will put you in touch with all the contacts including the gofundme thanks so much uh, as you know what i like to say at the end of a show is that around here nobody ever says goodbye they just say well i suppose mm -hmm.